This is the Man Rights Actors Podcast, episode 88, where we focus on relationships, sports, and pop culture from a managed point of view. First of all, we want to thank all of our listeners, our OGs, and our new ones from around the world, the UK, Germany, Canada, Portugal, and the Philippines. Thank you, thank you, thank you for hanging with the fellas. What up? On today's show, we're on Netflix kick today, and we're going to tell you what went wrong with Miles Davis and his wife, the dancer. Well, Miles tried to talk about the problems with his wife. But she kept dancing around the issue. <laughs> oh, the Tiger Kings had a harem. Dude, I didn't know chicks like tigers. They love tigers. Hell, they even like goofy golfers named Tiger. <laughs> and a dear Irby, <laughs> and a dear Irby writer wants to wear the pants, but he can't because his father-in-law has them on. All that and more. Right. <laughs> MRA podcast with Kyle and Kamel, where men come to talk and women come to eavesdrop. I am Kyle. I am Kamel. And we're saving relationships one listener at a time. Hey, man, let's start with the front page of our lives, man. How's, how's, how's the crib, dog? Man, everything is damn near perfect. <laughs> that sounds ridiculous, right? Man, now. listen, man. I, you know, thoughts and prayers to everybody out there suffering yeah, from yeah, the coronavirus. Yeah. But hey, yeah. over here in the Abdul Jabbar household, Things are good. Man, things are good, man. This coronavirus is, I mean, sheesh, it's it's got us all getting along, man. My son's been healthy. Mm. Uh, his personality's back, man. We've been playing like, like my wife made us do like family time. I mm. think I, I thought I would hate it, but mm-hmm. man, we over there playing Uno and, you know what I'm saying, the boys are cheating together and... <laughs> You know what I'm saying? It's been fun, man. We've been having a ball with family a ball. time. Because yeah, at first, they didn't want to do it. They didn't want to go off their devices. And, ah, yeah. Damn it, we got to do family time. Yeah. But, uh, you know, once we get started and they, you know, we get to playing, it, it gets competitive mm-hmm. and all that mm-hmm. stuff, man. And they start working together and trying to beat me. And, mm-hmm. ah, man, it's, it's been cool, man. You know what I'm saying? You know, wife's been making three squares. Damn, damn, you know what I think this is? I, I Let me tell you what my theory is, come out why things, because things over here is cool too, man. Like, I'm still in that family time. Uh, I think, man, you, you came up with this theory. You said if they can have you home and have the dough, everything's fine. Right. And this is an example of that. You're home. And, like, because of the, the virus and, like, uh, companies not really tripping on uh, bills and all that stuff. Like, everybody's pretty much in the same position financially yeah. as far as, like, yeah. you know, uh, lack of income. Yeah. It's not a whole lot of pressure. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, man. <laughs> so, listen, man. When you if, if your lady gets the time she's looking for from you and then you get the – and then the bill – you ain't stressed about the bills because the companies ain't really tripping right now. This is what it looks like if you're balling without being busy all the time. Yeah, without, you know, the only thing is like we can't go anywhere. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Like we can't do family, you know, you know, we, we like to go to the movies and stuff like yeah. that. But hey, uh, but you could go to somewhere before. How's that working out for you? It wasn't. Nah. Hey man, I'm doing a lot better. We're doing a lot better except for me. I'm still working like I used to, so I get a little cabin fever, and I get a lot of interruptions because I can't go to Starbucks, I can't go to my spot, so that's a little, I'm getting a little more irritable, but I'm getting my work done, but the my best times right now is I'm reading a book with my daughter, who's out of state, and that's pretty cool. She told me what she was reading, so I was like, you know what, I'm going to download the book, so she's reading the hardcover, and I'm reading the, the downloadable, and I'm trying to catch up to her so we have something to talk about. Because we don't normally have too much to talk about. Our conversations be really short. But now that we're reading the same book, we can talk about that. So that, that's been the highlight of my day. Aww. My best days, I know, man, my best days are when I FaceTime with all my kids. If I FaceTime with all my kids, and I don't always make time to do that, but the days I do that, that's when I'm feeling good. Is, does FaceTime have like three-way? Is like a bunch of different calls I don't there? think, no, you can't. That's, uh, I guess that would be Zoom or something Zoom like that. Zoom or Google yeah. Hangouts, man. If you yeah. do, uh, uh, Have you done the Google Hangouts? No, nah, nothing. Google Hangouts has pretty much like, yeah, you, you send them a link and like everybody can just pop in. I got to try that, man. But I got to share this before we go, uh, before we move on to the feedback, man. This, my, my, both my sons cut their hair for the, I guess because of the quarantine, they decided to do something crazy. So they got, you know, 
they have long curly hair. Now they got Covatuses. So my youngest, my youngest, we FaceTime and I saw he had a wave cap on, which I thought was hilarious. I was like, what are you doing? You know, kids think you get waves from a wave cap. Mm. That's the oldest lie in the book. I don't know. If, I don't know how your wave game was when when you had the, the, the hair cracking. But oh man, I'm trying to say that gently. How was your wave game? It, it, it was on point, man. But I didn't. I didn't. Uh, I didn't sweat my hair like I guess people with waves do. You know what I'm saying? I okay. pretty much after I got the shower, I lay it down for you know five or ten minutes before I leave, and, and you know my, my my shit was on point. But I had a fade, so I didn't have yeah, it all yeah, around. Yeah. Yeah, oh, you didn't have the 360. Nah. Let me just tell you something, Kamal. My wave game was on point. I learned, this is one of the things my dad taught me when I was little. His barber, you got to put your finger on the swirl in the back of your head, right? And then, you remember that? Remember where the hair yeah. starts? To, <laughs> I'm fucking with you. So you put your finger on the swirl, and then you brush your hair in all the directions that your hair naturally grows. Yeah. So I was teaching my son that, in the mirror, trying, trying to teach him how to pull the mirror so he could see the back and stuff like that. It was a cool little FaceTime activity, I thought. Because he told me he YouTube and I was offended. Like, wait a minute, man. You, <laughs> you got the king of waves, right? Well, he one call know away. That. Has he ever he seen you know. in waves? You have to I don't know if he him. has. Yeah. I mean, he, he he remembers, but he but still, it's just like my dad ego was like, man, what the fuck you doing? He, you you know, goddamn YouTube. You got me. You got, you know, yeah. dad too. Anyway, man, coming up, we're going to break down why all the Tiger Kings has so many concubines. Later in the show, a dear Irby rider wants to wear the pants, but he can't because his father-in-law has a mom. It's the MRA Podcast. Yo, Kamal. What's up? I finally finished my album, dog. The one you did in 2013? Yeah, yeah. man. <laughs> I know, okay. man. A long time ago, man. But I, you know, I said, you know what? I'm going to finish this album. This thing is coming out. Eventually. Eventually. You know, you, you got to finish. You can't give up. I can dig it. And eventually, it's finally here. Eventually, it's finally arrived, man. And okay. I was listening to it, man. This thing was funny, dude. Okay, it's not dated. No no, no jokes about chingy there, or nothing like that. There is some dated jokes in there. Oh, yeah. like, uh, like, there's a reference to... It was before Michael Sam came out. Because oh. it was like a reference to gay athletes that came out. And okay. I was like, wow, that's dated. Okay. But the, but the juxt of it is, is... Yeah, everything's good. Bruce Jenner still... Yeah, is I, Caitlin. Is yeah, Caitlin? He's still, no, he's Bruce. In the he's album. Bruce. <laughs> I don't talk about him, <laughs> but he was Bruce. Yeah, I used to have a Bruce Jenner joke. And he was Bruce, <laughs> and this when I recorded this. But no, nah, it's, it's it's ready, man. It's out. Okay. It's funny, man. Check it out. And get it on iTunes right now. It's called Be a Man at All Times. All right, Kamel, we got some feedback, man. One of these feedback came from your wife, dude. She's actually sent this in uh, a while back. Behind yeah, my no, back. She behind your back, man. Yeah, Over man. the creep and sending in letters. Sending in feedback and. <laughs> <laughs> Watch out. But it was positive. She said, I loved your episode about D Wade's son. Two black men who are not homophobic. He's talking about Kamal and Kyle. But maybe used to be having a real conversation about homosexuality. It was really good. I wish more people could hear. I do too. So share. Tell a friend, people. Yeah. About the show. Uh, the next one comes from Brandon in Spokane, Washington, listening to MRA podcast, enjoying it. I appreciate the breath of fresh air when I'm listening. L O L. That's pretty cool, isn't it? Yeah, man. He just he enjoys it, man. He didn't really get specific or anything like that. Yeah. Just like, hey, it's a, it's a breath of fresh air, man. So I definitely appreciate it. it um, just lets us know that yeah. he likes it all. Because some people are like, mm-hmm. I like it when y'all do this. I like. Well, he may or may not like it all, but he likes it. You know what I mean? I, I don't yeah. even need. We don't need to get into the deep <laughs> details. Have a I'm seat. I'm taking it oh, as Brandon. he. I'm taking it as he likes it all. Okay, well, fuck it. He likes it all. Hey, Back coming down. up, man. We we're gonna break down why all the Tiger Kings has so many hoes. But right, 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 right now, we got a post nut story. That's I mean, you ain't gonna believe this one. It's the MRA podcast. <laughs> Hey, come on, we got listeners all over the world now, man. Yep, yep. And uh, I was wondering, man, how, I wonder how the what the people do while they're listening to our show. I know we got a guy in the Navy who's in Spain who listens. Um, we got a lady that uh, drives a lift. She listens while she's driving her lift and has her customers listen, too, which is absolutely hilarious. <laughs> Cat in Brooklyn listens while he delivers some fish. Okay. We want to know from other people, man, how do you listen to our show? What are you doing? Hit us up on the social media. I'm at Kyle Irby. I am at Angry Kamal. And let us know what you're doing when you listen to our show. Kamal, what are you what are you doing when you listen to the show? Man, I'm usually chilling, man. I take the train to get my son from school. Oh, you do? Yeah, man. You so I get that. the headphones on and I listen to it front and back. The problem is I'm coming back. Mm-hmm. He wants to talk. Uh, I'm trying to listen. So I yeah. have to... You know, try to act like I'm paying attention to him. I'm really listening to my words of wisdom. That's that's good, man. Yeah. Pretend like you're listening to your son while you're listening to the podcast. That's one way to do it. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah. usually listen to while I'm cleaning the house, man. Uh, I, I picked 
Well, go ahead. Domestic work? Yeah, man. Oh, come on, dude. I wish. <laughs> I wish I didn't have domestic work, but yeah, man. I used to listen to it if I'm washing the dishes or, you know, folding laundry. I listen to, you know, any kind of thing that I don't have to think. Yeah. And I just get to listen. But I want to know what, what are the people listening? What are the, what are y'all doing? Let us know. All right, come on. We got a not in post nut mode story. Hmm. It's from Gavin in Greensboro. That's North Carolina. He said, y'all want to talk about post nut mode? I got one that takes a cake. I fuck my girl's mom. Damn! <laughs> wow. Wow. Gavin got straight to it. They don't really get along. Her mom... <laughs> I'm try to, uh, add, you know, add, you know, <laughs> preference. <laughs> let me, preface let me, this by saying um, they don't really get along. They don't really get along. So her mama always competing with her. She lives about a half an hour away in a place called Horny Town, North Carolina. That is ridiculous. He says that's a real name and the perfect name for a place like this woman to be from. Her mama is one of them types that's always flirting. The first day I met her mama, she grabbed my junk right in front of my girl. She told my lady, keep him away from me or she will fuck me. My girl says she has done it before more than once. The funny thing is, once my girl said that, I was thinking, wait a minute. I guess it's wait a minute. Wait a minute. If these niggas hit it, I gotta get mine too, shit. I was half playing. Her mama was not playing at all. She rarely comes by, but a couple years ago we had some people over for our daughter's third birthday party. I was in the laundry room smoking. That's my smoke spot. I blaze up, and when the room gets steamy, it takes the high to another level. Okay, thank you. I'm in there smoking, and her mama walked in with her short skirt on. She said she wanted to hit the weed. I passed it to her. She was already drunk. She looked me dead in my eye, and I felt myself getting hard. <laughs> I was thinking, I know this ain't about to happen. Then she tongued me down. Nigga, I picked that woman up and put her on her right there on my washing machine. The crazy thing is, the machine always be knocking against the wall so nobody could tell I was in them cheeks. I hit it right. Her mama finished twice. I wiped myself off, and she walked out, straightening her skirt like nothing happened. Her mom never stepped to me again, never said nothing. It was like it never happened. I hope she never said nothing, but if she does, I'm a deny, deny, deny. Bruh, how you feel? <laughs> yeah, man. that that That's a little too dangerous for me, man. I'm not going, uh, I'm not going there, man. Um... <laughs> Does he have any deniability that mama was on him though? It don't matter, man. Uh, once that first that initial meeting when she grabbed a swipe, mm-hmm. keep her away from me, man. Keep yeah. your mama away from me because that ain't cool. Because here's the thing about it, man. Maybe they beefing one day, and like mm-hmm. you say, he can deny it. But mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? One thing about encounters and stuff like that, man. Like a chick will remember, she might get really specific. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yep. He got that. Oh no, he, he ask him about that. You know what I'm saying? That double stroke. Oh shit! He, how, how she know about your double stroke? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like you could deny, but like you know what I'm saying? You got a hook. You know what I'm saying? A hook dick. Oh yeah. You know, <laughs> it, there's gonna be certain things that she remembers that. Yeah. Like, nigga, this ain't no generalization. Mm-hmm. And that's so, a little bit too specific. Yeah, yeah. So I just, I, me personally, man, I think that's a little dangerous. I think it's a little reckless. He was definitely in pre nut mode for sure. Oh my gosh, definitely. This is a perfect example of a pre nut mode story. But he was, he was in pre nut mode for a while ever since he met the chick. He been in pre nut like once he found out other people. Oh yeah! Well, now why not me? Yeah, so it was only a matter of time, man. The man never stood a chance. Nah, I got a question. Have you ever been with a girl whose mama could get it? No, I'm I'm not into like the family thing, Mm -hmm. so I don't, I don't, you know, I don't even try to meet your mama and stuff like that. I don't even, I don't (laughs) even, yeah, I don't even want to be around. Like, man, I'm, I'm. I'm the guy that they the parents are talking about. Well, how come we've never met such you know? I don't <laughs> and then that's and why is it because you don't want to have a, too much of a connection? Well, I just feel like I don't want them to know me because they're you know they know what I'm about. They know what I'm yeah. you know. I, I mean, especially like a pops. Yeah, 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 I mean, yeah. yeah, yeah. I, you you know what this is, pops. You know, man. This is pops. 
You know what this is, man. As <sighs> soon as you go to sleep, or you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't even want to. Uh. I know exactly what you're talking about, man. I've had situations where I don't even want to get close to the parents because I feel like, man, are we really going to be close? How long are we going to be close? Right. You know, are you are you going to turn on me when things will go well? So I don't trust the in-laws because I'm like, y'all don't really like me. Y'all, y'all, y- I'm temporary. As long as I'm with your daughter, treating her the way you approve, we cool. Yeah, and here's the thing about it. I know where your loyalty lies. It's, that's my point. Yeah. You're not really with you. We ain't friends. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We're not friends. I mean, let's we just be real. Really, yeah. As long yeah. as I'm with your daughter for three to five years, maybe seven, we cool. Yeah. But as soon as I'm not, I'm erased. So let's just let's just not be friends ever. How about that? We come back, Kamala and I both watched the Miles Davis Netflix special, Birth of Cool. And as cool as he was, brother Miles had a little bit of a jealousy problem. We'll break that down when we come back. It's the Amari Podcast. <laughs> Hey, if you're enjoying the podcast, do us a favor. Tell a friend. That's it. Costs you nothing, helps us out, and gives your friends some entertainment to make that commute a little easier or gives them some company on a workout or while they're cleaning the house so it helps them out, helps everyone out. All right, so please subscribe, leave a positive comment, and share, share, share. So, Kamal, you finally watched the Miles Davis documentary. You like it? I did, man. I did. learned a lot about the guy, man. Mm-hmm. Um, as a matter of fact, some of the music... That um that he made, I mm-hmm. didn't realize they was you know they was, that was him. Well, they were sampled in some of my you know hip hop songs and shit like that. Uh, I was like, oh, that's you know that's gang stories by uh South mm-hmm. Central Cartel and mm-hmm. so I didn't you know I didn't realize that like his uh I'm not a big jazz man, but the shit he, I didn't think I was yeah, but the shit he did like uh that I guess the the true jazz people hate it. Uh-huh. I was like, yeah, hey, that shit that's just cool to me. <laughs> the pop shit is great. Yeah. I love the pop shit. I, you know, I didn't, I got into jazz because one day I was listening to, well, it all started with the Quincy Jones documentary on Netflix. That was a whole nother story because I started realizing how much I really, I thought I was a Michael Jackson fan. It turns out I'm really a Quincy fan. That's the real, and then I realized Quincy did jazz. And then that kind of took me down a rabbit hole. Then I started, what really got me into jazz is when I realized that my favorite rap group, A Tribe Called Quest. And I love how it's A Tribe Called Quest, just like it's slick back. No, no, it's a pimp named Slickback, like a tribe called Quest. You say the whole thing, a pimp named Slickback. It can't be called you Slickback for short. No, nigga, I'm a pimp named Slickback. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> but when I realized that Tribe Called Quest was sampling jazz, and then they even had the song, We Got the Jazz, We Got the Jazz, yeah. I was like, okay, I guess I do like certain kinds of jazz. And then... I got into Coltrane just because I like the Netflix music documentaries. And I, and then from there, I stepped to Miles. And I was watching Miles. And, you know, I enjoyed him, man. Not as much as Coltrane, but I do like him. But, bruh, man, the dancer wife thing, that's why I wanted you to watch it, man. Because there's this moment in the show, y'all, where Miles Davis is married to this beautiful sister, this dancer. I guess he got jealous of who she was around and the cat she was seeing at the dance place. And she just decided he just moved him to New York or whatever and turned into a housewife. Taught her how to cook. She didn't know how to cook. You know, brought his kids around and was like, nah, you're going to help them with homework and you're going to cook three squares and, you know, you're going to treat them like Vertina in quarantine. That's that's your new life. Uh, well, listen, man, I I um, there's no excuse for like the physical abuse because I hear, you know, they were all saying like Miles was putting tips on on yeah. his women like as yeah. he got older. Uh, but he grew up in an abusive home. He, um, mm-hmm. You know, he saw his pops beating the shit out of his mom. I think he not pops knocked her teeth out and so you do that Damn. shit in front of your kids man you basically create uh a person who mm. either a is gonna hate men and hate everything about it or he's gonna think this shit's normal mm. you know what i'm saying and this is how you yeah. deal with like you know uh Back disagreements yeah exactly yeah, yeah, yeah. so and I, I guess it was the latter for miles he looked at it as this is normal mm. but in my main man Miles' defense, yeah, that woman who I hated for the <laughs> like for the majority of the doc, I hated the fact that she was always just jocking herself. Oh my god, you noticed that she was basically just saying like how fly she was. She yeah, had the best, best legs, legs in, in the, the business. business. She was the best. Di- and so my point is, if you got a chick who's always just feeling herself. And she's probably in public or telling Miles, like, you see how they was looking at me? Oh, shit, I came in there. I was a, and so he's like, well, what the fuck? Well, stay your ass in the house then. 
You know, you know, you, you, you know how I got the part, right? Because I was the best looking. I was, he was, you know, he was looking at me the whole time. So she probably was throwing this shit in his face. How dudes oh. checking her out, Bruh, She dog. She came home after a party and told Miles how how handsome Quincy Jones was. Now you don't have to watch the Quincy Jones documentary to know that Quincy was a player. I'm still a player. Quincy had them hoes on deck, and when you and Miles knows this. You ladies do not. I'm not saying there's an excuse for him checking you, but don't. If you you know you got a jealous man, don't go home and tell your man how fine a, a, a rich and famous musician is. Please don't do that. No, especially one with player playeristic qualities. Thank you, <laughs> Jock Woody Woody Allen. If you got a jock somebody, <laughs> <laughs> you need somebody to jock. So you know Woody Allen's kind of cute. Oh really? Oh, no, he ain't. Yeah, man, he was jealous, man. But and, and one thing about Miles, man, Miles. Miles kept cold ones. You know what oh, I'm saying? Man. After his like first wife, he kept, you mm-hmm. know, like top notch actresses, models, dancers. Mm-hmm. And so it was like, man, he he and plus this is the sixties and seventies, yeah. man. This is the height of free love. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? He like, hey man, you know what I'm saying? Like he's he's chill at the Playboy Mansion. I'm sure Hugh Hefner is asking dudes like, hey man, let me let me, let me get a piece of that. He like <laughs> hell no, man. So he, so I know they was getting down like that. Yeah, you know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Rich people, free love with the cocaine mm-hmm. and the quaaludes and whatnot. So, and Quincy was like, man, you know what? I just keep mine at home. I'm going to be out there. <laughs> but she can't come. Hey, man, we come back. We're going to break down why all the Tiger Kings seem to have so many spouses. Later on in the show, a dear Irby writer wants to wear the pants, but he can't because his father-in-law has them on. It's the MRA Podcast. <laughs> Are you yelling at your radio right now? You know, what the hell are you saying? You wrong, Kyle. You wrong, Kamal. Yeah. Or, 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 right, right. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Word, word. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, then tweet us. Stop what you're doing unless you're driving. Stop what you're doing. Hit us right now. Respond to us. You know, just talk to us right now. Let us know yeah. how you feel. I'm at Kyle Irby. I'm at Angry Kamal. Or you can hit us both at The MRA Podcast and let your voice be heard. Yeah, man. You know, so we'll read it. We might even respond. And you just might hear it on the show. Yeah, man. Be a celebrity for a day. <laughs> yes, <Yeah, so> man. Just <laughs> yeah, stop what you're doing. Hit us up, man. You, you'll get a response. Yes, sir. Kamal finally finished watching the Tiger King, dude. Yeah, you enjoy it? I loved it, man. The fun, Let me tell you the funny thing, how I finished, man. So I'm watching it with the lady. She's falling asleep. And I hate watching. This is why I hate watching with somebody because you got to wait for them, right? So right. she fell asleep. I'm like, yo, man, you are you sleep? No, I'm not asleep. Just like a 14-year-old. I'm not asleep. I ain't oh, sleep. Man. All right, fine. Oh, that's my girl, man. My girl. Oh, man. I'm not asleep. I'm not asleep. So then I finally get tired of it. I was like, I'm going to tell you. I'm going to warn you one more time. If I think you sleep, I'm not even going to ask you. I'm just going to watch the rest. She was like, that's fine because I'm not going to sleep. <laughs> I watched all of them. I finally finished. <laughs> she was just like, did you watch? Yeah, I watched them all. You weren't awake? <laughs> so I finally watched them all, Cabal. Oh, I had a ball, man. Anyway, man, dog, but one thing you pointed out to me that I did not notice. Now, I know that Doc Antle, also known as Bhagavan. How do you say his name? Bhagavan. Bhagavan. But that means like the Lord. Lord. Yeah. Yeah. Lord Antle. I, I realized Lord Antle had a couple. But a couple? Oh, he had a harem. Yeah, he had a, he had, they all had their own houses. He had a few. All the girls had their own houses? Oh, yeah, you didn't see he was driving around the complex. He had like five, oh he had like seven, eight wives. Man, that's how it's done, bro. Yeah. Hey, man, this is what we're talking about, Doc, Doc Antle, man. He felt very Trumpish to me, Kamal. He was very self congratulating. He was very pat myself on the back ass dude. Like I was like, he he annoyed me the whole time until I found out that they was all his wives. Then I was like, he's not so bad. <laughs> <laughs> He's misunderstood. He's misunderstood. That's how I was about Kobe. I didn't like Kobe till Denver. I was like, well, maybe, maybe <laughs> I've been wrong about this guy. <laughs> but yeah, man, like Doc Antle got on my nerves, man. How would you feel about him initially? Hey, man, I liked it from the start. Why? When I was younger, I wanted a tiger. Oh, you know? Hilarious. Yeah, from that Thriller album. You know what I'm saying? You opened up, Mike is like laying with the <laughs> he tiger. With the tiger. Yeah, I wonder whose tiger was that. Was yeah. that Joe Exotics? I don't know, but I was like, man, I, I want one. That white tiger yeah, yeah, yeah. and shit like that. I yeah, just yeah, seemed yeah. like that. I just seemed like some balling shit yeah it's to, definitely balling shit to have a tiger yeah yeah yeah. you know what i'm saying yeah. here's the thing man this is how all cults start uh-oh dude if you're talking like whatever you're doing is a movement 
Uh, and this is and you, and you slick and you can talk that shit mm-hmm. like all cult leaders mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying have concubine you know what mm-hmm. I'm saying if you can convince the people that this is a movement and this shit's bigger and everyone's against us and it's just mm-hmm. us against the world it's mm-hmm. like the people at Heaven's Gate that drunk the Kool-Aid Jim Jones Jim yeah. Jones had hoes you know what I'm saying? He had a wife and he had other chicks that, you know, they just into him. Charles Manson. It's like, yeah. like if you can, listen, a billion people will think you're crazy. Mm-hmm. Except like 12. Is, <laughs> yes, yeah, all you need is 12. <laughs> Hold on, I'm taking notes right here. If you can convince, <laughs> I need trying to start me a cult. <laughs> we're gonna make the MRA. We, yeah. we we say in a commercial is just trying to start a movement. This is a movement. I'm trying to get on. Yeah, I mean, but if you can talk that slick shit, man, it's like anybody mm-hmm. is always talking that philosophical stuff who's not normal. You know what mm. I'm saying? It's like the God, guy. You sound like me every time you keep talking, man. It sounds just like me. Yeah. Philosophical, <laughs> not normal. Yeah. I'm like, wait a minute, man. I'm a cult leader. Yeah, you you off the traditional path and stuff like mm-hmm. that, man. It's like the guy that's talking that. That black shit in college, you know what I'm saying? Mm. The that, it's always some chicks sitting around, like, just, you know what I'm saying? Be- oh, they love it, dog. They love it. Yeah, everybody. My cousin's father is a guy Yeah, like everybody's that, yeah. going to the clubs and partying. And this guy is like, you know what I'm saying? See, that's what the, you know, what we got to do is take it back to the spirituality. And there's mm-hmm. like three or four of them is listening. Now, the club yeah. is filled with like, you know what I'm saying, 150 the chicks. The rest of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But he see, see, that's one thing I've always been a fan of Kamala's knowing how to pick them. I'm not going to the club. I don't need those hundred right there. I just need the right few. Yeah. That's going to make the squad tight while y'all over there in Instagram shopping for your lady. Well, see, here's the thing about it, man. You could definitely have a cult, man. So with your philosophy is what you're doing is you, you, you pick the chicks before the philosophy. Mm. You got to have the philosophy first. You know ah, what I'm saying? You have to have the down. philosophy first and then when you out there, you know what I'm saying, pontificating, that's when they show up because they're like, Oh, this is interesting. This is different. But you can't you can't start the cult with a traditional yeah. with a traditional I've been relationship. Doing this so wrong. Yeah. Have the philosophy. <laughs> yeah, first. man. Like like you like um that's just the way it is, man. If you can get up there and talk that slick shit. Mm, you mm, know what I'm saying? Mm. The mega churches, all that stuff, yeah, man. Yeah, for real. You, Did you notice that Carol Baskin was kind of like that too, though? She was the same as them. Wow. She was the same as them. Under, But her thing was she's saving them. She's mm. saving the Tigers. You know what mm. I'm saying? But she had the same shit. She had a farm. I mean, I'm sorry, a zoo. She was mm. charging people to get in there. As mm. a matter of fact... <laughs> You Those women saying? were not getting paid. Right. I mean, it was the same. It was the exact same shit. She was uh. like, uh, I don't even know these motherfuckers. They like, you got to be here for like three or four years before I even, you know. It was Dog, like, you got to, you work your way up in the tears. You got to, rel- t- t- oh, you're just a green shirt. You're not a purple shirt yet. Dude, and you everyone, make them scrap to be that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? They all do some man way shit just to get to. You know what I'm saying? The top. That's like they're. <laughs> Are you selling no way products? Yeah, it's like it's like what's what's the one uh, that Tom Cruise is in? Uh, well, we're not gonna mention the name of that, but yes, it starts with a S. Yeah, it's yeah, a it's like yeah, you got the people. You know what I'm saying? Starting at different levels, and you know what I'm saying you don't get to rub elbows with Tom Cruise. No, no, no. You don't work your way up to that. You don't get. You don't. You, you didn't meet. You El- didn't meet El Ron yet. Nah, hell no. Nah. Mm. Nah, but you El Ron had holes. Uh. You know what I'm saying, and that's and that is when you when you got a cult, man. I think that's really the goal. I think this whole thing is about just like, yeah. I think Manson was really just like, you know what? Uh-huh. I, I just like to, I like to smash. <laughs> I all like to these smash. Chicks. You know what I'm gonna do? And the drugs made him a little bit crazy, but I think you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying. If he was less on the quaaludes and all that psychedelic yeah. shit, Manson mm-hmm. would still be alive and and In smash. Him. Yeah. Mm, yeah, mm, Sharon mm. Tate would be alive. All the people, but I think the drugs. Who's really... Sharon Tate? That's one of his victims. Yeah, yeah you know. What I'm saying? Is that the one that did the movie about? Uh, yeah, the Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't even know that was real until afterwards. Yeah, I was reading um old Sammy Davis Jr.'s uh autobiography or some shit like that. He was basically saying like, "Yo, that spot was the hangout. That was the, that was that was the spot. Sharon Tate's house at Roman, at Roman Polanski. Yeah, that was that was the spot. He was like, man, we was partying over there like damn near every night. He's like." I could have easily been at that motherfucker that night. Damn. Yeah, it's just he said, just by the grace of God, we didn't go that day. But 
That was the spot. Yeah, that just took a weird turn, bro. When we come back, man. <laughs> hey, listen, Mr. Miyagi taught Daniel son a bunch. He also taught Kamal and I some lessons, too. We're going to share some when we get back. It's the MRA Podcast. Can I have your attention, please? We are trying to start a movement. You heard that right. We started a movement. We're doing something different here at the MRA Podcast. We vibing with y'all. You know what I'm saying, fellas? You know what I'm saying, ladies? It ain't just fellas that listen to the show. Matter of fact, it's the majority of women, but it's all good. I know you know somebody that fits with what we try to do over here. So all we need you to do is send it to them. Tell a friend. You know what I'm saying? That somebody know how we get down here at the MRA show. Show, 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 show. It's really called the podcast, but I, I just wanted to rhyme, no, and show. Kamal found this on YouTube. It's uh, from Foundation Interviews. And, you know, you know when they know, when YouTube knows what you like, especially when we quarantine and isolating, they start suggesting mm-hmm. stuff and you being in a rabbit hole. I know you're the king of the rabbit hole, right? Yeah. So I'm watching, I, I, you know, they know I love Karate Kid. So they gave me this, I see Pat Morita up there. And I was just like, well, let me find out. He talked about how getting Arnold on Happy Days is relatively easy, but getting in the Karate Kid was the opposite. Check out what he said. Just as, let's say, an Arnold, an executive producer came to me and said, I really want you for this role and you're perfect for the partner. Diametrically, 180 degree total opposite. So Jerry Weintraub wasn't fucking with Pat Morita, right? But here's the big thing. Big time producer. Yeah, yeah, big yeah, time big producer. time. And, and he said he didn't want a comedian. I didn't even know Pat Morita was a comic. Did you know that? Yeah, he was on the old uh, Richard Pryor show, I think. Uh, and he was he was on uh, Sanford and Son. He was Achu. Oh. He was um. Uh, the name was, uh, was Achu. Yeah, he was uh, Lamont's homeboy. <laughs> you know, Fred was a racist, so you know, pretty much <laughs> all fr- all his homeboys was like, you know, he had that no good Rollo who he hated, black dude, but still, yeah, he, still hated he had him. the Puerto Rican dude Julio, yeah. and then he had the Achu, and you know, Fred just dissing all these <laughs> niggas, man. <laughs> oh, that is hysterical. His name was Achu. Yeah, man. <laughs> I, th- I knew he was a stand-up comedy a comedian, but I didn't, obviously I didn't know that when the Karate Kid came out. Oh, so you knew that afterwards? Yeah, I okay. learned that later on. Okay, I never knew he was a stand-up comic. So he was talking about how he was down on his luck. He was going back and forth to Hawaii, and he was, you know, taking gigs, just writing copy for commercials, just whatever he could do. Which I'm thinking, man, that's nice when you can, without having to go to UPS or Ralph's. You know what I mean? Where he could still make it just using his. I always respect the people that can do that. You know, like, man, I was struggling as a comic, so I had to write commercials for a while. Like, yeah, that, that's nice. Well, yeah, he was Arnold from Happy Days, mm-hmm. so it's like he still has a name. So it's like, yeah, I'm doing corporate gigs and stuff like that. If you get, you know, we can't get Richie, we can't get the Fonz, we can't, we can't get Arnold, though. Get, hey, for a hey, <laughs> little less. He still, you still got to pay, but it's going to be a little less. <laughs> yeah. But, hey, man, what I love about it, though, was what Jerry Weintraub and Pat Morita learned. It doesn't matter what you say, because Jerry Weintraub didn't want Pat Morita. And, you know, sometimes what I love about it, especially, like, when it comes to your romantic relationships, if she's for you, she'll come around. Not that you got to be pushy and stuff like that, but she'll realize that you're the best thing for it. I just love when it's when somebody thinks, oh, man, this will never happen, and God is like, uh, check it out. So check out this clip right quick. Now, This is, again, how an actor, especially, knows that the gods are with you, although you don't realize it at the time. You notice I got my longer hair and the beard, and I had never done that before. I was living in Hawaii. I was down in the dumps again. The career was on a slide, and I'm working in Hawaii, taking what work I can find, you know, nightclub comic work, writing copy for commercials, doing whatever. Uh, fundraiser MC things for politicians and, and stuff, and uh, making barely making a living, but making a living. And for some reason, I said to myself, gee, I, 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 I've never seen myself letting all this, just let everything kind of grow. <laughs> Basically, the role was Pat Morita's from the beginning. And he had to audition, what, he said five, seven times? That's always weird to me, to audition so many times right. for a role. You know what I mean? I've never auditioned that many times for a role. Well, the thing about it is, man, if you about to, if this is about to be a, a tentpole movie, yeah, and you're yeah. about to sink you know, millions of dollars into this project, 
man, I'm auditioning the motherfucker 30 times. <laughs> just to make sure. Just to make sure, mm-hmm. man. You know what I'm saying? If he's gonna be the if he's gonna be the catalyst to get people in the seats, mm-hmm. I, I can't have them. I can't have no slip ups. Mm-hmm. You know, I gotta believe that this motherfucker is, you know what I'm saying, old World War II vet who knows karate and mm-hmm. all I, I need I need to believe it. Yeah, he was like, man, he acted his ass off in that shit. Remember yeah. when he was drunk? Yeah. (laughs) Singing about his wife, man. That boy got chops, man. I think the thing that really attracted me to this story, Kamal, is that that rock bottom feeling of like, man, dude, like right now we're we're in the middle of quarantine and, you know, we're, we're trying to make it. But at the same time, I'm trying to figure out what's next because things are changing. I don't know. I don't know what comedy is going to going to hold. You know what I mean? And I want I don't, I like this lifestyle. You know what I mean? Like, I want to be able to live like this. Do like some what? jobs, get residual income, and sit my ass at home. Work from the crib. Oh, oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, there are people that are not stressed at all about about their jobs. I'm stressed. You know, it woke me up this morning like, ah, man, I got to figure out how to make this money. You do a couple of good projects, man. You know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah, you, you're, not, you're not tripping. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? You do a couple of projects that are, you know, that, that are well received mm-hmm. and but how? pretty successful. Well, you know, that's the that's, that's the hard the, part. That's mil- yeah, that's the million dollar question. I mean, my you dream is to put our own stuff out, like pops, man. I'm I'm loving the script script revisions that you've done. Like my dream is, what if we can make money from pops? What if pops? brought us dough i mean real dough and what if we can make real dough from this podcast and it took us all around the world speaking to different places and stuff like that and we got a cult with five six women apiece like what if our dreams <laughs> <laughs> but for real for real like man what if it didn't take quarantine to get fed but one of the women in the concubine always made sure breakfast lunch and dinner was was correct. I mean, you know what I mean? Like, what if we could put out MRA masks for people that need the mask with a masculine look, a masculine mask with the MRA logo on it? Like, what if we could do uh, everything? That'd be, that'd be dope, man. I like everything you said. I'll say this, though. I probably would never be able to get concubine or, like, chicks follow me just because they see it in my face. Like, nigga, you don't even believe the shit you saying. <laughs> <laughs> they can just see it. Like. Well, you can pass me your share because I believe every word I'm saying. <laughs> Be like, this nigga is confident. <laughs> <laughs> hey, now, did you know the director of the movie, uh, what's his name, John Appleton? Did you know he did Rocky? No. I didn't know he did Rocky, man. He did Rocky and he did Lean On Me, man. Joe Clark. Mm. Boy, Joe Clark, man, Lean On Me is a great movie, dude. Is the guy still alive? Because if he's still alive, he's not he's not tripping off of money. Cause yeah, he did some projects. He did some that great was, project. He's dead. Yeah. But if he were alive, okay. <laughs> yeah, he did some good. But but like I said, man, it would be nice if we could create our own, man, so we wouldn't have to go back to, you know, you got two hustles, I got two hustles, and I'm like, yeah, they're great, but man, I want to do my own thing. But but at the same time, we can't be delusional and say I'm going to do my own thing. I'm I'm an artist because because we got to provide. We got families. Yes, sir. And man, we come back, man. We have a guy who's trying to wear the pants, but he can't because his father in law has him on. It's the MRA podcast. Hey guys, I want to take this time to ask you to subscribe to the World According to Cheryl. That is Cheryl Underwood's podcast. It's hilarious, and I'm on it. Let's get in this Dear Irby letter. Let us. Your mom's in my business. She's in my business. Can't you see, girl? Your mom's Dear Irby, I'm tired of my girl's family in our business. I've been with my wife about 15 years. Things are good right now. I already work from home, so isolation is not hurting us. And my kids were already homeschooled by my wife, so literally nothing has changed. The problem is, I am tired of my in laws calling the shots. Back in the day when my girl and I got together, her parents used to support us. I was between jobs and her parents are loaded, so I didn't mind. The problem is, they be always reaching into our house to make rules and shit. Sounds like a black dude. Like the fact that, <laughs> like the fact that my kids are homeschooled, that wasn't my choice. Her mom always complains about the school system and told my wife to take them out of school. Oof, that would frustrate me. My wife don't work because her mom told her to, oof. I'm I'm reading this like I never read it before. It's bothered me like, what? My wife wife don't work because her mom told her a real woman stays at home and takes care of her family. Even when I lost my job, my wife didn't work. She just asked her parents for more money and they kicked in. 
If something goes wrong, my wife turns to her father before she comes to me. Oh, golly. Her car broke down, and she called her father to come get her, even though I was home. We got her to it over that, and she's telling me I'm tripping. What do y'all think? Ooh, I'm getting upset. Mm-hmm. What you think, bro? Ooh, Alan, Alan, Alan. This is bad. <laughs> you got a bad situation. This is awful. <laughs> this is... My God. Here's the thing. Alan, <laughs> here's the thing. You messed up from day one. There you go. There you, messed you up go. a long time ago. Yeah, it does. So they've been together 15 years. Yeah. And, and, and probably... Me and Alan probably got the same disposition. What that is. Well, just like, whatever, man. We ain't tripping off of yeah, nothing. Yeah, yeah, Whatever yeah. is easy. You probably, you're probably an easygoing guy, Alan. You probably got with your girl when you were in your early 20s or maybe even like your late teens or something yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. you really wasn't tripping off of stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know what I'm saying? I don't know. Early on, you guys were, they, they were leaving, living with the, um, the in-laws. Mm-hmm. Yeah, living with them. It's like, whatever, man. So they, let, they let us stay here. And you probably thinking, you know what I'm saying, you're winning. Mm-hmm. I got a free place to eat. I got food and mm-hmm. all that stuff. But what they were doing was, man, they were, um, what is it called it when you, uh, infant, infant, what is it, infantile or if whatever the fuck, they just making know. them a child. Uh, who made them a child? The parents. They, made, they made the homie a child? Yeah, man, because he's he's Alan? a depend. They made Alan a dependent. Wow! So Alan, you were a dependent early on, and they treated you as such. Ooh-wee. And even though you've gotten older, they still see you like they see their daughter. Mm. You know what I'm saying? The same way. Uh, that's that's a problem, and because. You know, I, if you're anything like me, you're easy going and stuff like that. You're like, whatever. And so when she's, um, you know, having trouble, she mm-hmm. calls her pops. Mm. Because pops, in her mind, is pops. Mm. You're almost like a sibling. Ooh. You know what I'm saying? They're, they're treating you like a sibling. Wow. You know what I'm saying? You're not the man of the house. Pops is the man of the house. And even if we moved away, we're still a subsidiary of Pops' house. Damn. You know what I'm saying? Phil Knight's still running Jordan Company. <laughs> you wow. Know even though he ain't like, even Nike no more. Uh, yeah, exactly. Whatever the fuck. You know what I'm saying? Whoever's ahead of Nike. Yeah. <laughs> Whoever's ahead of Nike is still like running Jordan. Wow. And Jordan is like, it's my thing. You know what I'm saying? And so here's what you have to do, Alan. I mean, it's going to hurt, but you have to break cold turkey. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Come on, you always, it's so funny how people don't change. You're always saying cold turkey. That is all. Got to. (laughs) I mean, that's the only way. I mean, he's miserable, and this shit's only going to get worse. Mm. You know what I'm saying? All decisions, you know what I'm saying? They got to kick it up to their parents. You know what I'm saying? My household, we got to find out what your mom and daddy think first. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, homeschooling. Again, you probably wasn't tripping. That's mm. the thing about it. You're not tripping. But as you get older and your man, your man starts to kick in, mm-hmm. your natural man, like mine started to kick in probably when I was around 27, 28, it's like, hold the fuck up. Mm. This shit ain't cool. But the groundwork and the foundation's already been laid. Mm. It's hard to back that fucking thing up. Mm. It is hard. So that's why I say you got to quit cold turkey because here's the thing. As they get older, your kids get older and shit like that. And just it was the pandemic and everything. Mm-hmm. You don't want to be left out of the decision making process. Mm. 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 And I think that's what's going to happen. You know what I'm saying? When they get together for like their little tribunal, mom's pops and your wife. Mm. And you'll get you'll get the decision what they you know the decision they made, you know what I'm saying. You're a lieutenant right now. Mm. You want to be a general, man. And so the only way for you to be a general of your own home is you got to cut her parents off cold Ooh. turkey. Now she said you were tripping, so I don't know if that's like she just doesn't see it. And if she doesn't see it, you're good. If she's mad at you, like, well, fuck you, these are my parents, you got a problem. Mm. You can make her see it, but if she understands it and she's good with the status quo, you got a problem, man. Mm. So 
I would say rip that Band-Aid off. Mm. Parents are out. You know mm. what I'm saying? And, and, and when the world comes back, take your kids down to the local public school. <laughs> <laughs> now, like I said, if you, because here's the thing about it, you have to be hands-on. No more, like, whatever. You have to be hands-on. You have to do your research. You have to start, you have to have an answer for this shit because mm. I'm sure her mama has an answer. You need to have an answer. So it can't just be like, you know, I want this because it's the opposite of what your parents want. Mm -hmm. You need to do your own research. It's time to put your big boy pants on, Alan, Mm -hmm. and run your household. Dude, that shit could have easily been me. But my first wife, uh, she had been on her own Mm -hmm. for, you know what I'm saying, five or six years. Mm -hmm. She, you know, broken off from her pops. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But if she was a daddy's girl... Mm. Because I was just whatever, mm. you know what I'm saying. I'm just, I'm just that guy. Whatever. So I could have, I could have easily been where Alan is right now. Mm. I could have, I, I could have been that guy. But my, but my ex wife, she was basically she been on her own. She had some static with her pops when she was a teenager, so mm. she had bounced as soon as she could. Mm. And she had been on her own for like five or six years. Then she put herself through college and all that oh, stuff, God. and so. She was independent in that regard. Mm-hmm. But because of my disposition, because I'm just going with the flow and mm-hmm. stuff like that, you know what I'm saying? Definitely. I got lucky that they had some issues when she was a teenager. Mm-hmm. You don't have to deal with it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> yeah I, got, I, I won in that regard. You're two for two in, with the, in the pops category right now. In, in, in that regard, yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. But there's because, a, a drawback from that as well. Yeah, but 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 now that I'm you know I'm 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 into my man shit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't want no competition from nobody. You know, I, no. This is why lions. This is why lions make sure they're the only man around. Hey, even son, they gotta you gotta do get it. the fuck out of yes, here. Yes, even if or, it's by force. Yep. Yeah, if if or I gotta go. One of the two, but we but we're not gonna <laughs> be fighting at home. We come back, I'm gonna yeah. win. <laughs> Hey, what's up, y'all? If you like this show, you want to help us offset some of these costs, man, you feeling the need to donate, then do just that. Go to www.patreon.com and make a donation to The MRA Podcast. That is The MRA Podcast with Kyle and Kamal, and you can find us at Patreon. Or you can catch us in the street and just be like, hey, man, I love y'all. I want to bless you with some cash and put some dollars in our pocket. You can do that. Or you can hit us on Venmo find our names and just you know bless us with dough on venmo or you could pray for us do that too <laughs> but we prefer cash come out normally when i talk about these i say this one touched me but this one touched you right here this one got you boy. <laughs> got under your skin a little bit mm-hmm. all right um I'm, let's go, let me break this down man I agree with what you said Kamal. his problem started a long time ago man he got lulled to sleep man two two times this happened to me when I got fired from Sheryl Underwood, I'm back now, but the first time long years ago, I realized I had stopped learning how to hunt. I didn't know how to go get gigs anymore. I had depended on her from gigs and I had turned into a bitch ass motherfucker bitch. because she was paying me and I got comfortable and I stopped hunting. It's like if it's like in the Tiger King, right? I was thinking about a solution for the Tiger King. I was thinking, you know, what would be good if. Joe and them, Ray, because, you know, they kind of got in trouble for, they kind of got in trouble for, they talked about earlier in the series, I don't want to ruin it for people, but this is earlier in the episodes, they said, you can only make money from them when they're cubs. Yeah, they can, you can't pet, you can't pet no two-year-old tiger. No, because it's it's huge. Yeah. They take over the house. And so, once they stop being cubs, they're wondering what happens to these tigers. They foreshadowed. And in the last episode, they kind of answered that. So, I was thinking, what if they had like a reverse, you know how the slave ship brought us from Africa? What if they had a, a, a reverse ship that took the lions or cubs, you know, lions, because these, these, these animals are endangered, right? What if they mm-hmm. took them back to Africa after they stopped being able to make money for them, took them back home, take them back where they're from so that we can repopulate. So it's like, all right, listen, we get to make money off them as whatever, as babies, as cubs, hey, take your pictures. Okay, as soon as they get a certain age, send them back, and then, you know, who pays for it? Well, whatever, the wildlife chip in and blah, blah, blah. Anyway, send them back to their natural habitat so that they can repopulate. But the- You know that's impossible, right? Because they were raised, exactly. they were raised in captivity. Exactly, which was my point. <laughs> okay. Which was my point. That's what happened. 
I, I became a domesticated animal. Hmm. Just what is happening right now in Corona, where we're all in the house and like, this is awesome. We're becoming domesticated. And that's why your lady's so happy. That's why mine is so happy because we're, we're becoming domesticated. And so once you become domesticated, those wild animals cannot survive in the wild. And once I became head back, you know, feet up, Cheryl's, Cheryl's paying me well, I'm good, I don't have to keep, no, 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 no. You got to always go find your own work because the second she's done with you, or that means either you're stuck with her and you got to put up with the way she treats you, or when she drops you, you asked out. So you got to go, you know what I mean? So it's like, yeah. that's what happened to me. And for the years when I wasn't paying rent with the new lady, that's what happened to me. I lost that, that desperation of, I got to make, I mean, I, I had in a sec, in a sense, cause I was still taking care of 75, 75% of my family, but because I wasn't taking care of the whole family, a section of one department got weak because I wasn't in position. The same thing is happening to you, Alan. All right, guys, now it's time for the lesson of the day. The second you compromise and let her daddy take care of you, you became his son. I remember one time this person is going to remain nameless. I was traveling with the celebrity and the celebrity was treating this certain club owner rudely. And the club owner got tired of the celebrity but then the celebrity tried to buy breakfast for the club owner and the club owner would not eat a bite. And what that club owner was saying was, no, we not cool. I'm not letting you feed me because if you feed me, you own me again. And I thought, wow, that's deep. Hmm. Cause my black ass would have been eating my, <laughs> <would've> been like, <laughs> that motherfucker's a bitch. I can't stand that motherfucker. The point is, man, you compromise Alan. You compromise, and now you're paying for it. Yeah, and here's the thing about it, man. Like you said, like uh, he Alan became dude's son. Yeah, he he doesn't respect Alan because he let him take care of him. Yes, and and think about he it. Does, yeah. This guy has a daughter, so he don't trust Alan. And guess what? Your wife don't trust you either. Yeah. Oh, he's definitely he definitely doesn't trust Alan. He's saying like, dude. Alan's not the man she needs to be. Uh, she needs to be with. So I'll be that man. I have to be that man because yeah. Alan's not. He might even want to be that man. I know a lot of guys that that want to be the number one guy in their daughter's lives forever, not realizing just like when women, you know, do that to their sons and make them make them, you know, unsuitable for a mate because you keep them dependent on you. But let's go through this. All right. So once once you let him support you, that's when you compromise and you haven't gotten your respect back, even though you're making money. Once again. Here's his real problem to me. It's really hard when the mama is controlling the daughter because this is a controlling family. This is what you're dealing with, Alan. Your in-laws are controlling. Daddy controls y'all with money. Mama controls y'all with mama. Mama is saying, you know, mama, I, I you know, you know, I'm, it's so weird how often women talk to their mamas. They talk hmm. to them all the time if they get along all the time. Now, whoever... <laughs> homeboy from post nut mode i don't think he heard her mom was talking all the time but yeah. they talk to him all the time and so if her mom was always always bringing in this satellite of ideas she's going to implement them because she's, she's used to it you got to talk to your wife and say it's time to stop we cannot let your mama's out. we you got to bring that to me you can't just make decisions without me you got to get your man on bro and you haven't been getting your that's why she don't turn to you and here's the thing her dad did not do a hostile takeover. Her dad just was dependable. That's what you got to be. And eventually you will gain her trust. But you've got to remember Madam C.J. Walker's story. Uh, she didn't trust her husband. He has to earn that trust. You know what I mean? Like if you keep on coming with good ideas, but the problem is you're going to have to, you're going to have to stand your ground. This is why Alan's in trouble. If he's a laid back guy, laid back guys don't want to argue. They don't, no. want, they just want it to be smooth. So they just say, fine, whatever. But it's not okay. It's not okay. And cold. Oh, no, he's, go ahead. I was, I was gonna say he's got to come out of his comfort zone. Mm. He and he's got to be proactive. Even if let's say, mm -hmm. let's say for argument's sake that that pops is really that dude. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? He's the you know the beacon of wisdom and all of that shit. You got to start going to him first. Mm. Not not your wife. 
Mm. You know what I'm saying? Hey, pops, uh, I was thinking about blah, blah, blah. Oh, okay. And so then you you guys are having a conversation. Mm-hmm. And then you can throw your input. And then he was seeing, he might respect you as a man, mm-hmm. but basically telling his daughter, if all the information is getting funneled through his daughter, mm-hmm. you are just a prop. Yeah. They probably you, don't. Yeah. yeah. Good luck. That's a good idea. If you're, if, you can gain his trust. You got to get everybody's trust. Uh, Mama, we talked about that. My wife don't work because her mom told her a real woman stays at home, takes care of the family. That's once again, that's a conversation you have with your wife, not with her and her mama. Even when I lost my job, my wife didn't work because just because <laughs> she just asked her parents. Oh, my God, that's embarrassing. That's what did yeah. it, man. Yeah, she don't trust you, Alan. I'm, it's disgusting to me because it's probably scaring me. I never want to be like this. You have to you one piece at a time. Let me let me come with solutions and stop lament, lamenting what's going on in your life. Good, you got the money piece. That's great. But now you just have to be consistent. You got to be a little squeaky wheel every once in a while because that's what women do. They call their files. You're gonna have to start calling your files. Unfortunately, you know? yeah. I, I, like I say, he's got to do his research, man. Everything that you have a problem with, you can't just have a problem for the sake of having a problem with. Mm-hmm. You have to have a legitimate reason why your way is better or. You know what I'm saying? Your way should work or a reason why you want to make these decisions because she trusts her parents. Her yeah. parents raised her. Her uh, parents are loaded. Seems like her parents have through. not. Yeah, and they have not fucked up. They yeah, haven't shown. You they fucked have, up. <laughs> it wasn't yeah. my fault that I got fired. Yeah. It, it, well, it may not have been your fault that you got fired, but it was your fault that you didn't have the money saved. Right. They're Bill Belichick. Mm. You know what I'm saying? They're, and, and you're Freddie Kitchens or somebody like that. Like, mm. man, you. You might be good, but we we know over we know, here yeah. this is gonna be a good decision. Wow. You know what I'm saying? You're you're some new rookie coach and stuff like that who who like the the, the team don't trust mm. somebody who played for Bill Belichick mm-hmm. and now they're playing for you. It's like, yeah, they still call him Bill. Hilarious. What should I do? You're in trouble. Last thing, man. Her car broke down. She called her father to come and get her, even though I was home. We got into it. And she tells me I'm tripping. What do y'all think? Okay. I like to blame the victim. So you were tripping because you've already set up a system where she goes to daddy for help. You may not have communicated that I am daddy now. I, I, what the pirates told her, I'm the captain now. You need to tell her I'm the captain now. And you might have said it with your words, but you haven't showed you with your complete actions. So if you really were the captain, she wouldn't have. Thing that's bothering you, Alan, is that she's turning to her father still and he is undefeated. (laughs) That's why. Get your rep together, bro. Come on, for real. He's Bill Belichick. Get your rep together. Be patient. So are you tripping? Yes, you are tripping. You are tripping because you set this up and now you're mad at the... It's like when you have a spoiled-ass kid and you call your kid spoiled. Hey, you spoiled the kid. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, you thinking he was winning Mm -mm. because you coming downstairs and mom's made, you know what I'm saying, breakfast, and you like, oh, this shit is good. Mm -hmm. Me and Pops get along. I sit there and watch his his TV and he let me, you know what I'm saying, play his pool table. Like, you all doing all... You think you winning, but it's his Uh, shit. Yep. That's all his shit. Mm. Mm-hmm. And all and all you were doing was you were basically, you know, what I'm saying, going down the man pecking order. You just mm. get taken t- ah, going down, and you were losing pops respect each time. Every each time you was going down. Out. Every time you geeked out about his shit, he just was like, "Gotcha." If you guys have a dear Irby letter, send us an email at dear Irby at the MRA Podcast dot com. That is dear Irby at the MRA Podcast. Dot com. Where can we find you? Man, I'm at the house, obviously, but uh, you can find me on, <laughs> on Instagram and Twitter at Angry Kamal. I'm at Kyle Irby, K Y L E E R B Y. Both of us are at the MRA Podcast, and my website is kyleirby.com. You can see some of my commercials I've done, some comedy videos, and check out my schedule. Not going anywhere anytime soon, but if you ever, <laughs> depending on when you listen to this, you might be listening to this in March. I mean, March of 21, or you might be listening to this in July, whatever. So who knows? Check out the website. The MRA Podcast is where you can find all 88 episodes that we have done. Ladies, we love you. Fellas, be a man at all times. Deuces.